the capitalization of members here. I assume everyone's okay with that. Just shout out if, you, if it's, uh, you're horrified by a change. Um, this one, public comment, just a, a little tweak maybe for some legal purpose. Uh, any person is provided an opportunity to comment. Um, Anna? I really like right to speak. I think that it is their right. Um, I don't know who instituted this change. Kylie, do you have any input on that? I, or Lori? Here. Yeah, go ahead. Are we on? <laughs> Had to answer the phone. What item are we on right now? Uh, we're talking about where it's, I, I, I got a different document here. I probably should have shared this, but um, it says public comment. Any person has the, uh, any person is provided an opportunity to comment as opposed to has the right to speak. Yeah, it was just a suggestion for better language. They technically don't have a right, but of course we well, routinely allow it. Um, so it was just, Brett looked that over too and uh, agreed. Yeah, um, uh, Denise? I wanna clarify that. Thank you for that, Lori. Um, is it true that, that there is nothing that states that they have that right? And that we are giving them that because I, mm -hmm. I actually mm -hmm. agree with Council Member Mockler on that. I really like the phrase, you know, they have the right. Mm -hmm. um, they don't. It's empowering, but if they don't, then we're leading them to believe that they have this right. I don't know. I just wanted to make sure I was knowledgeable about whether, in fact, that you know, right is in inherent as a citizen. Yeah. Thanks, Quinn. Yeah, I if, if they actually don't have the right, I'm I'm from better precise language. Um, if it's just an opportunity, and also the the change seems more inclusive, uh, including people that might need to sign or use assistive technology um, and are unable to actually speak. All right, Jeff. Uh, suggest any person shall be provided an opportunity just to bridge that middle gap, and it's a little more forceful. Okay, Anna. Any person has the right to address. Um, even, I, I don't know what else guarantees the, that right, except we, their elected representatives, are giving them that right. These are our rules and procedures. We're giving them the right to speak. Thank you. Jennifer. What is our procedure for ADA compliance for deaf? Uh, individuals, for instance, um, uh, mute. What is our practice for public comment um, at a city council meeting? I know, I mean, there's, we can get letters, you know, emails, but what's the practice? Do we have one? Right. We have the closed caption when we're on Zoom and when we're in the chambers, there is equipment available. Um, it's been years since I've, but it's there's some type of mic or something is available for that um, to be ADA compliant. Do we, what happens if somebody's deaf and they come and they are speaking sign language? Um, I probably need to talk with Angela and I can get you the answer to that. This did come up and yeah. so when we were having meetings in person, there is a notation at the bottom of every agenda that says if you need um, ADA, uh, you know, either deaf or blind or whatever, um, to let us know, or you're, you're to let the city clerk know, and then accommodations okay. are made. We have um, even used to keep a um, list of sign language interpreters on hand, but I can't remember when we've ever used it. We, we do have all of that in place. Thank you. It was ADA. a good time to ask that. I, we oh, have sorry. an ADA committee too that works with this kind of thing. So. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Um, again, I, I feel like, um, I feel like this should not be on 
Wednesday's agenda for consent or general. I feel there's no, we, we're clearly not done with it. 